Hello, this video is an introduction to URCL, which is an intermediate programming language. First off, who am I? I am Mod Country. I've spent two years building CPUs in Minecraft, and I've built some of the most powerful non-command block CPUs in Minecraft. Look at Mod Country on YouTube if you're curious. And I am currently looking to expand into compilers and operating systems. And before I start talking about URCL itself, I want to give some context as to why URCL exists exists in the first place. So compiling high-level code, this is relatively hard to do, especially in an efficient manner since RAM is expensive in Minecraft. Many other Minecraft and FPGA CPU builders have struggled with this, at least the ones I've spoken to. Custom CPUs tend to all use different proprietary ISAs, and this means there's almost zero compatibility between custom CPUs. And even if one person manages to write a compiler for their CPU, that does not help anybody else. So why are compilers hard? This is because the gap between high-level code and assembly code is huge. What we want to do is to lower the barrier for entry for simple, low-level CPUs, and an intermediate language could help bridge this gap. So as soon as I mention intermediate language, you should think LLVM. Well, LLVM is great until you actually look at it. LLVM contains lots of non-assembly features, things such as the fire function and variable types. All of these don't exist in assembly, or at least the types of assembly that we're interested in, the simple low-level CPUs. So LLVM ends up being pretty much just as difficult to translate to assembly as translate raw C code, which defeats the point of an intermediate language. So then, what are the issues with LLVM? LLVM is very overcomplicated and very hard to translate to assembly. Memory management and variable types have to be figured out by the user. It looks nothing like typical RISC assembly code and is not at all friendly for simple low-level CPUs. And as I said before, raw C code ends up being pretty much the same difficulty to translate. So then, what do we need? We need an intermediate language which is simple, it's easy to read and usable, and is able to be translated into most simple arbitrary ISAs. It needs to follow an agreed standard which is shaped by those who use it, meaning if we find that there's a particular feature that we dislike or a new feature that we want, as long as enough people want that change to happen, then the language could be changed to accommodate for that. We also want a fixed number of of registers so the user doesn't have to manage memory allocation and of course it must have no variable types and now for the idea. What about a generic universal assembly language? A small group of people and myself started to put together ideas and gradually more and more people joined in. We made our own discord. Now there's over 70 of us working on this project. Now introducing URCL, Universal Reduced Computer Language. So what is it? URCL is a simple assembly-like language. It is easy to read if you have any experience with assembly. As an example of some URCL code, at the top right. Each instruction is atomic, which means that each instruction is executed sequentially, and the next instruction is not executed until the previous instruction has finished. The instructions are also fully self-contained. This means that the instructions do not require any information outside of the operands specified within the instruction itself to be run. What this means is if you have the same instruction in a different context, then that same instruction instruction will do the exact same thing, meaning each instruction, each URCL instruction, can be easily directly translated into most ISAs by translating each URCL instruction one at a time to the target CPU's ISA. URCL uses a low store architecture with three operands. The instructions typically take the format of first having the instruction name, followed by the destination operand, then the source operands. So the destination operand comes first, and then the sources come afterwards. URCL is being constantly updated, and every part of URCL has been debated and voted upon. URCL code typically uses the .urcl file extension. 
description. So, how is your CL used when translating from high-level code to assembly? Well, first of all, we start with our high-level code. Then we translate this into the equivalent your CL code through a compiler. Then we take the your CL code and translate it one instruction at a time into our target CPU's assembly. Obviously, it's a little bit more complex than that, but that's generally what you have to do. Before I get any further, I must mention that there are two competing versions of YourCL. There's main YourCL and flagless YourCL. This video is about flagless YourCL. Since main YourCL does not have proper documentation or compiler support, but flagless YourCL does. Okay, so there are three main classes of flagless URCL instructions. There are four instructions, basic instructions, and complex instructions. Four instructions are the simplest instructions, and all flagless URCL compatible CPUs must be able to translate these. Then there are basic instructions. These are relatively simple and are most likely to be translated directly, but if a CPU cannot translate these directly, then they can be converted into core instructions. Complex instructions are harder instructions. Generally, these are more difficult to translate directly, but they can be converted into basic and core instructions. There are six core instructions. These are add, write shift, load, store, branch if greater than or equal to, and nor. If a CPU can translate these, then it is fully compatible with flagless URCL. Since all other instructions can be converted converted into these simple instructions. The add instruction simply adds two values together. The write shift instruction forms a an unsigned bitwise write shift of a value. The load instruction loads a value from the RAM into the registers. The store instruction takes a value from the registers and stores it into the RAM. Branch if greater than or equal to will branch to a location if one value is greater than than or equal to another value, and nor performs a bitwise nor logical operation to two values. Since URCL supports a wide range of CPUs, this means that in each program must individually specify the required specs for that program. This is done through file headers. File headers just contain extra information on how the program must be run. First, we have the bits header. The bits header simply specifies the word length that the CPU must be for the program to run successfully. Minreg simply specifies the minimum number of general purpose registers that the CPU must have, and this does not include the stack pointer. Min RAM specifies the minimum number of words that the heap must be able to contain. This does not specify the entire RAM space, it only specifies the heap space. Min stack refers to the minimum number of words that the stack must be able to contain. The import keyword is used to import library the run keyword is used to specify whether or not a program is run RAM or run ROM. Run ROM is where the program, the compiled program, is stored separately to the RAM space that the program has access to during runtime, such as on a Harvard architecture. Run RAM means that the compiled program is stored within the same RAM space that the program has access to during runtime time, such as on a von Neumann architecture. It is important to make this distinction, since data values can be stored within the instructions themselves, and this only works on von RAM CPUs, as those values need to be able to be accessed at runtime. So now for the memory map. The heat is located at the bottom of the RAM, and on run ROM, this is location 0. However, for run RAM, this is located on the first space available after the compiled program. The heap then grows upwards, and the min RAM header specifies the minimum size of this heap. The stack is located at the top of the RAM, and it grows downwards. The stack pointer points to the last item in the stack, 
And now for an example. This is some example code for doing a simple Fibonacci program. First, we start with an IMM instruction. This is an immediate instruction. It loads an immediate value into a register. So immediate R1 0 loads an immediate value of 0 into register 1. Then we have immediate R2 1. This loads an immediate value of 1 into register 2. Then we have dot Fibonacci. This is a label and it is not an instruction. This label simply points to the instruction that comes after it. In this case, an add instruction. The add instruction, in this case, add R1, R1, R2. Take, since the first operand is the destination and the second and third operands are the sources, this does R1, register 1, plus register 2 and puts the result into register 1. Then the next instruction is an add instruction again and it again adds register 1 to register 2 but this time it puts the result into register 2. Then finally we have a jump instruction. This simply jumps to a specific location within the code. In this case the label from earlier which is the dot Fibonacci label which is the beginning of the loop. So this program will loop forever and it will produce the Fibonacci numbers within registers 1 and 2. So what about a slightly bigger example such as this division by repeated subtraction program. First of all we start with three immediate instructions. These load the immediate set value of 75 into register 1, the immediate value of 5 into register 2, and the immediate value of 0 into register 3. Register 1 will be the dividend which is 75, register 2 will be the divisor which is 5, and register 3 will be the answer. The answer is set to 0 at the beginning of the program and will contain the answer once the program has finished. Then we have the beginning of the division loop marked with the division loop label. The division loop starts with a branch if less than instruction. This will branch to the label dot end if register 1 is less than register 2. So if the dividend is less than the divisor. That is not the case to begin with so this branch will not be taken. Then we have a subtract instruction. This does register 1 minus register 2 and puts the result into register 1. This does, so this takes the dividend, subtracts the divisor and puts the result into the dividend. Then we have an increment instruction which increments register 3 which simply means to add 1 to the answer. Then we have a jump instruction which goes back to the beginning of the division loop. After the division loop has run 15 times the branch if less than will activate. This is because register 1 will be equal to 0 and the divisor will be equal to 5, meaning the branch will be taken and it will go to the dot end label. The dot end label points to a halt instruction which simply then halts the CPU. The answer is then contained within register 3. So what tools are available for your CR? Typically we use Visual Studio Code as our IDE when editing .URCL files and this is using the URCL syntax highlighting extension which is available on the marketplace. We also have several emulators as well as several compilers C-like and B although a full C compiler has not been done yet. The emulators and compilers can be easily accessed using the Discord bar or they can be downloaded and run offline. So what does your CL need? Your CL needs a proper C compiler as well as any other language. We also need more libraries since libraries have been very underused. We also need better support for libraries in the emulators and compilers since most of them do not support libraries. We need more translations to pre-existing CPU assembly code such as 6502, MIPS, x86 and so on. And as as cheesy as it sounds, we also need you. Even if you cannot help directly with the above, your opinions are still invaluable from the polls which shape the language. So if you want to know more or if you want to contribute, please consider joining our Discord. The link is on the screen and this is also linked in the description. All of the URCL documentation, including the formal documentation, is available on the Discord. And with that, thank you for watching. Cheerio!